Raquel Harris has a passion for God and for soul winning. She's an author, a speaker, and the pastor of True Life Ministries, where she trains other Christians in intercessory prayer. And since tomorrow is National Day of Prayer across the country, we thought we'd have Pastor Harris come in and talk about the importance of prayer, as you can see there, for your great name's sake. May 4th, National Day of Prayer. We pray here at LaCie Broadcasting 24 hours a day, Pastor Harris, uh, seven days a week. So it just speaks to the importance of prayer. How did you develop your own prayer life? Because I know there are people who are watching saying, I, I don't think I'm doing it right. I, I don't feel like I'm hearing from God. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually studied Daniel's prayer life. Okay. Um, I believe that Daniel was very effective, and the Word of God says that Daniel prayed three times a day. And so that's what I've patterned my prayer life after, making sure that I get that prayer time in at least three times per day. Okay, so let's back up a little bit because I think people, some people have a different, may not even actually know what prayer is because they think of it as some mystical or deep thing that they just really don't have a handle on. Well, how would you describe prayer? I would describe prayer as a communication process by mm -hmm. which we're able to communicate with God. And so that's very important because the Word of God tells us that we have an enemy and his job is to ultimately destroy us and prevent us from going to heaven. So when we pray, we're able to communicate with God and counterattack the enemy's attack. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, Pastor, to those that uh, maybe are discouraged or, or perplexed, wondering, I pray, but I don't seem, my, my prayers don't seem to get answered. I would say never give up and, and keep believing because I'm sure that, that Joseph at some point in his life mm -hmm. felt that his prayers weren't being answered. And look at the fruit and, and the harvest that came from his diligence in serving God. So I would say be persistent in, in, in prayer and don't give up. Mm -hmm. Now there's a difference in personal prayer and intercessory prayer. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, today because we know that we're interceding for our country as a, you know, as a nation on National Day of Prayer tomorrow. So talk about the difference between the two. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the scriptures in Ezekiel 22nd chapter, it says that, I, that God looked for someone that could stand in the gap and he found no one. So intercessory prayer is us coming together and interceding on behalf of others collectively so that we can see a good harvest and mm -hmm. a result. So how do you do that at your church? I mean, do you, you said that you pray, you pattern your prayer life after a Daniel's, a Daniel's prayer life three times a day. How do you even start that process? Well, the Word of God tells us in Psalms that he, he says early should we seek Him. Mm -hmm. So every Saturday morning we have a prayer team that comes together and we pray collectively and corporately, not only for our church but for the world and, and for churches and evangelists all over. So we do that consistently every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now, I just kind of on our tease, you said, is America on the brink of revival? Uh, what, what say you? I say yes, and I say that the more believers that we can get to come together that can take an active stand and be persistent in prayer, I believe that we'll have a greater chance of bringing the country together, unifying, and really hearing from God. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I first came to Faith in Christ how I used to think that I really wasn't making a difference. Like, I could sit in my room and kneel at my bed, but am I really affecting change in the spiritual realm? And we need to understand as believers by faith that when we pray, God hears us, doesn't that's right. he? Yes, and, and that's why one of my favorite scriptures is 1 John 5 mm. and 15 that says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm -hmm. So as long as we know, we, we have confidence in the prayer that we pray, and we know that if we keep believing, God will hear us. Now, now you brought up, the will of God there, which uh, at our prayer line center here, that's that's one of the frequent prayer requests and questions and things that our volunteers get to talk to people about, uh, is uh, you know how do I know the will of God? How do I know if I'm praying according to the will of God? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that whenever you start your prayer life and whenever you begin prayer, it's important to always say, Lord. Um, this is what my desire is, but is this in your will? Because the Word of God tells us that the safest place is in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you're a member from your church comes to you with a very practical situation, and you know that that person has some doubt whether or not God is going to respond, how do you build a person's faith in their prayer life? 
Well, the first thing I tell them is that the, the Word of God is so, it's, it's not complex. It's simple. And so all you have to do is believe in your heart and not doubt. And then I also incorporate that with the Word of God tells us that one can put a thousand to flight, but the two of us coming together can put 10,000 demons that are coming against your what you're praying for to flight. Mm -hmm. And so we join hands together and I actually go into prayer warfare over that believer. And actually, I actually use my faith um, where they may be weak, I use my faith and I actually pray on their behalf mm -hmm. as, in addition to praying with them and yeah. helping to build them up. Is it, I mean, can we really claim parts of this world or, or different nations for Christ by prayer and is that strategic? We know that the Bible tells us that Satan is the prince of the power of the air and principalities belong to him. Can we take back, you know, what he has stolen from us? Can we really make a difference with it? I absolutely and how was the strategy for that? Exactly. And I mm -hmm. believe, again, it goes back to the more we need believers that, that will be consistent in, in agreeing. The power of agreement in prayer is so important. Okay. And so, again, just again, you mentioned the word strategic. It's very important that we are the, the kingdom of, of Satan is very organized. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of God has to be that much more organized. And we have to be. Uh, just come together and consistently pray on behalf of the country and others so that we can see a difference. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, the prayer of faith, you know, which we read in James says, the prayer of faith mm -hmm. shall save the sick. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the foundations of this ministry are built on that dynamic of, of faith. So uh, the prayer of faith specifically, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a correct view and then there's like a, an incorrect view where it becomes all about me. So mm -hmm. when you say the prayer of faith, what do you specifically mean? Well, in, in that particular scripture in James, it talks about the prayer of faith saving the sick and also God will forgive us of our sins. Mm -hmm. So the prayer of faith is basically believing in faith. When you go to prayer, believing that you have those things that you're asking for and they will happen. So mm -hmm. just making sure that when you pray that you don't doubt in your heart, that you absolutely believe that the things that you're praying for will come to pass. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of misconceptions about prayer and um, some I used to hear when I was a growing up. Um, that God doesn't answer or hear the prayers of a sinner, the sinner's prayer. You know, Lord, uh, bless my daughter or oh, help me with this test that he's not listening. What say you? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> I know, and I would okay. say that God hears the prayer of a sinner with repentance. Mm -hmm. And if you're a sinner, my, I would encourage you to first begin your prayer life with, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And then you can be more confident that God will hear you. Mm -hmm. But it also leads to a deeper relationship with him through his word. I mean, because, you know, there's a strategy in praying the word specifically, mm -hmm. opening it up mm -hmm. and praying. So the two go together. Isn't that correct? Yes, I would absolutely agree with that. And, mm -hmm. and it's important. The word of God says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So that's why it's important that when you, you if you pray for something, don't go back and counteract it with mm -hmm. the words of Your God. words. You want to mm -hmm. make sure that, you're, that you are speaking those things that, that be not as though they are. Mm. Now, your ministry, uh, the church, <clears throat> has a prayer line as well. So what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, you know, opportunity do you see there, and not just as outreach, but the kind of calls that are coming in? What, what, kind of, what are some of the, the main needs that you're seeing people having today? One of the, the focuses we're, that we're seeing in one of our greatest uh, passions right now and is the, the spirit of suicide that's plaguing mm -hmm. our teenagers. Wow. And mm -hmm. so we actually have, in addition to our regular prayer line, we have a youth crises hotline mm -hmm. so the young people can call. And if they are contemplating suicide, we have intercessors that can counsel them right then and there. Wow. And we've been, actually my daughter was so successful in helping to pray with a, a young person who was contemplating suicide mm. and was able to get them to change their mind. And so that's one that's one of the one of the many calls that we get that yeah. just breaks my heart and we're we're glad that we're able to pray with with people and get them to to see a difference in their life. Amen. Amen. That Amen. the assurance of the word is true that if God's people who are called by his name would humble themselves and pray and seek their fa his face then he would heal our land. We have to turn from our wicked ways. To connect with Raquel, go to truelifeinchrist.org or go to harvest-tv.com for more information. And be sure to catch uh, Raquel's uh, inspirational teaching segments right here on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. Still to come, find out how you can help us spread the word with LaCie Broadcasting. But up next, Brian Bush in today's Holy Land Moment. <laughs> 